Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. This is Blower Door Basics. Now we've certainly seen blower doors used in other episodes, but in this one, we're going to break down step by step how to set a blower door up, why we use one, and what it reveals about a home's energy efficiency that we otherwise might not find. So we've reached the site for the, uh, the blower door setup today, and I think it's going to be a pretty cool one. You know, a lot of other folks have done blower door videos, but this house has some interesting aspects to it that may make things a bit different. It has some ceilings that are going to make calculating that volume difficult, and we're also dealing with a straw bale house, so I'm wondering how tight it's actually going to be. So if I'm going to do a blower door on a house, the first thing I like to do is to get a feel for the house. We also want to go around and look for things that are open. Any door or window that's open to the outside, we want to close that before we start the blower door test. And of course, in that same vein, anything that's open on the inside, interior doors and things like that, we want to make sure that those are open so the air is flowing through the entire house. Let's take a look. So as I walk in here, I'm looking for uh, basically any penetrations in the walls. We've got some venting for the dryer. We've got a gas line coming in. Uh, we also have some uh, water piping. So when we're looking for our air sealing measures, places that are leaking, these are some spots to check. We've got our access to the crawl space. So it looks like this next room is the kitchen. Now this brings up a good point. Any combustion appliances, we have a, uh, a gas range here, those need to be shut off. Now we also had a gas dryer, but uh, that's obviously not running. Pretty cool wood-burning stove, it looks like. Now this brings up another interesting point. For anything that's wood or coal burning, you want to make sure you talk to the client ahead of time to ensure that they haven't been using this for a period of time uh, before the blower door so that this unit can cool down and you're not uh, potentially sucking hot coals out of it in, into the living space when you're doing the test. Some other unique features that you may not see in other uh, houses, but looks like we've got kind of an indoor grill here. So making sure that that the flues are closed is important. You know, this one looks like there it's open and uh, I can hear it close right there. And the same goes here. While it may not apply to this home, other considerations include looking for friable asbestos and deteriorated lead paint. Look at the loose fill insulation in the attic and pipe wraps around heating systems. If friable asbestos is present, it's a walk away. Do not run a blower door test. As for lead, if you find deteriorating lead paint around windows, doors, or anywhere in the home, it's really up to the state and the individual auditors as to what to do. A good recommendation may be to at least use a HEPAVAC to clean up the debris before proceeding. So uh, the rest of the living room then looks pretty straightforward with the exception of the vaulted ceiling. Now uh, we're going to have to calculate out those angles so it'll be a good uh, test of our math skills to find out the volume of this room. Now we talked to the homeowner and back behind here this is where they have their water heater. So it, it is an electric water heater so we don't have to check it uh, as far as the combustion uh, appliance to, to make sure it's off. But uh, if we're getting any air leakage in this area, we may have to open this panel up and see what's going on in, in there. It's a little closet, a linen closet, and up in the top of that, they have a very tiny access space to get to the, uh, to the attic. Now what I'm looking for is to ensure that that attic hatch is sealed fairly well. Of uh, course, you've probably noted that the ceiling is all tongue and groove. That would be something kind of tough to, of course, uh, seal up all of those little spots if we did have leakage. Of course, we got this sort of odd profile of the ceiling again. Uh, we'll have to account for that. The windows are closed. Of course, we have uh, this obvious fireplace here. Uh, much like the wood-burning stove, you know, I don't see any ashes or anything in there. Uh, check the flue to make sure that this flue is indeed closed. So 
So we're going to start taking some measurements and figuring out what the volume of this home is. Now this is our most involved room because of the vaulted ceiling, so it takes a bit of math in order to figure all that out. When I'm doing a complex room like this, I actually like to figure out the measurements of the surface area of this wall up until the midpoint. Now it works out real well here in that our, our sunken living room stops at about the midpoint. So that's, a, that's another foot of height that we get in this area that we wouldn't get on the other side of it. Looks like we're right at about 15 foot tall. So now I got the length of uh, one part of that triangle. And I'm going to come over here and see, uh, see how tall this is at the bottom then. When I draw out my profile, I've got a triangle at the top that is five feet. And I have a wall that's 10 foot there. And obviously to that point there, it's 10 foot as well. See how wide this area is. 13 feet. So that means that we have this square that is 13 by 10 and this triangle up here is 13 on one side by 5. Now when you're calculating out the square footage of a triangle it's one half base times height. So in this case it would be six and a half times 5 to get our square footage of that area and this of course is 10 times 13 to get our square footage of that area. You add those two together and you have your square footage of that entire section of wall which we can take and multiply by the length of this. See what we're at here. And so then I'll, I'll draw a line here representing my length at 232 inches. So we've made all our measurements, we've shut all the windows to the outside and opened up the doors on the inside. Let's go set up our blower door. Just one quick tip on the blower door, if you're working in a house that only has access through one doorway, make sure you bring the right things in first. There are a lot of different blower doors on the market. This just happens to be the one that we're using. One of the tips, uh, at least on ours here, and all of them are going to be similar, is to make sure when you're setting this up, all these little knobs are on the same side. These are the knobs that you're going to be working on from the interior as you're, uh, you're tightening this up in the doorway. So we got our basic frame set up. I'll loosen these up a touch. Let's go ahead and do a rough fit then. I like to just get it fairly close to the size before I lay the fabric on. And leave a little bit of extra because that fabric's going to take up some space. All right. So that looks about close enough for now. Let's go ahead and uh, lay the door itself on here. We'll just velcro these couple of pieces on. So we've got this door put together roughly and before we put it up in the doorway we want to make sure we didn't leave anything outside and then we also want to uh, get the hose that leads to the outside pushed through the doorway. The big thing to, uh, to be aware of is that you don't uh, 
you don't just pull out enough so that it's hanging down in front of the fan because that's going to give you a bad reading. So we like to pull out to oh, 15, even 20 feet, at least so we can get it out of the way of that fan. If you're dealing with a, uh, a porch outside, for instance, a, uh, a closed in porch, you want to make sure you pull out enough so you can get it to the outside and not just into that porch area. All right, so we've got about 15 foot out here. I'm just gonna toss it out to the side here and make sure that it doesn't have any kinks in it. That's looking pretty decent there. Out of the way of the fan, I don't see any, uh, any kinks in the hose. So let's go ahead and fit our doorway in here. You wanna pull your uh, fabric tight so you don't have a, uh, a sail. And then you just wanna work with these knobs using your hands and your feet to make sure you've got them uh, just roughly hand tight. You notice there's both a knob and a lever. That knob is to uh, loosen it up so you can hand tighten it there. And that lever, you can see, just puts on a little added pressure. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, got a little bit of slack in the center here. You just want to kind of pull that tight. All right, so the next step is to put the fan in. You want to make sure that those are on the inside. And now depending on the way your doorway is set up, you could get some wobble with this fan when it starts up. So we like to keep a piece of foam or, or even a little block of wood so we can kind of even out that, uh, that surface there. We're ready to hook up some hoses here. So we're using a, a digital manometer here. This is the DG700. Uh, again, a lot of different ones on the market. Uh, some folks are using the analog gauges. Let's hook this up here. So this upper right port on ours is what we hook to the fan. And then that green hose that we saw earlier hooks to this lower left. So let's, uh, let's get it all set up. So our fan hooks up right on top here. There's only gonna be one port, so it's uh, pretty easy to get that set. Now I like to set everything up, uh, set it down to the side of the fan. Uh, when you're taking your readings, you know, you don't wanna be blocking this, uh, this airway. So your rheostat here, this is just what controls the speed of the fan. And so you can see that, uh, you, know, you can just move that from low to high and you're gonna adjust you know, how much flow is coming out of that fan to get your, uh, your 50 pascals that we're looking for. I like to hang that on the crossbar here, so let's go ahead and put that in. And this crossbar is also here so you can really make that connection solid with the fan. So now we're hooking up our outside reference air here bottom left plug. We've got our fan plugged in. We've got all of our hoses set. We've got our hose hooked up to the fan, measuring that pressure. We've got the uh, hose hooked up to the external environment outside there, reading that pressure. And then we have our reference points here that we're, uh, we're picking up pressure inside the home. So this is all good to go. We're ready to get a baseline. Stay tuned for part two of Blower Door Basics, the testing process. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.